Thank you very much indeed. The Ghanaian Times this morning says Man Meda's wife in Dan Suman attempt to topple government, military accused of abusing rights of accused. Temamoto were part of a crowd flood after downpour and President Slam's Nigeria border closure says a setback to a cross integration project. The Daily Graphic. Money laundry. Ioko busts woman in $313 million deal. Adopt current methods for collecting data on productivity. Experts urges West African countries. Dr. Baba Musa is the Director General of the West Africa Institute for Financial and Economic Management. And he said today will tell us the state of the economy um, at, the, uh, at the department at the University of Ghana in Accra today. Expected increase in tertiary education numbers. Student loan uh, requests seed money from government. And Daily Guide, coup plotters cry foul. Isiakwa teacher killers, formerly charged with murder. Cops killer is mad, says the lawyer. CPP Green Street back, PDS cancellation. The Finder newspaper. Good morning, Senior Vistaku. To tag calls off strike as directed by the National Labor Commission, GCB injects 100 million Ghana cities into energy sector. And ECG's indebtedness to independent power producers jumps to $1.5 billion. No psychiatric examination for Kaswa Cops killer. He is saying court rules. And you remember the gentleman who was supposed to have killed uh, one policeman and was uh, actually, we're told, escaping through the, uh, the Akusumbo area and was apprehended. My guest this morning, Mr. Eric. Chum, he is a member of the NPP's communication team, and the Honourable uh, Alassane Suin is the member of parliament for the Tamale North constituency. He's in the race again one more time, hopefully, to win it. Uh, Eric, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Johnny. I'm How are the grounds? Well. How are you? How are the grounds? <laughs> <laughs> the grounds are wet. The grounds are wet. <laughs> Ready for planting. It's been, it's been raining. Planting for food and jobs. Oh, uh, you're asking me something else. Yes, I'm asking you something else. Uh, well, all is good. Declaration good. of intent. Well, the intent has been uh, <laughs> declared already. Okay. Yeah, so, so Fantiakwa it is? It's, it boils down to the, the, the work on the ground. Okay. So Fantiakwa it is? Fantiakwa South. Fantiakwa South it is. When the party gives us the go-ahead to go out there and campaign mm. officially. I have, I have no doubt in my mind that you are fine material. So let's see how Thanks it goes. Thanks for the endorsement. Mm. Let's see how <laughs> it goes. It should come with some campaign... Le Let's Some see how it donations. goes. Donations. <laughs> <laughs> what, what can I donate? <laughs> no, there's a lot of things that you can. You I'll, can even come there. And I'll donate Bible tracts so the people can renew their minds. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Alasan, welcome. Johnny, thank you. How's it Good going? Morning. I'm terrific. I like uh, my friend Eric's discipline. Okay. You know, he always remind you that the party has not yet... Uh, Open nominations. Open nominations. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, need, so, and so he's a very possibly. disciplined person. But that's, that's why I couldn't uh, zoom but, in, but, in there. But, but the, the interest has been declared. And declared, <laughs> yes, yes. We declare it. For when you blow the whistle, we'll jump to it. That's, that's, yeah. that's yeah. quite interesting. Anyway. But I wish him the very best of right. It's a seat that we are hoping to, you know, uh, and next this time around. Really? Are you sure? So it's even, going to be even for your interest. Even for your uh, friend. Contest. When your friend has declared intention. Well, I, I wish him well, <laughs> but not to the point of winning the seat when we have a chance you to have, win. You it. don't have a chance at all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The sweetness of the pudding is in 18. 2020 beckons. We'll see how the results turn out. But yesterday it rained. Um, I call it little rain, big floods. And no, no other place than the Temamoto Way flooded, the Death Track Estates, and many other places. Have we done enough to stop this annual return of rains? And I know that, yes, it floods elsewhere, but do we have an excuse? Well, um, once again, good morning to yourself, good morning to my friend Suhini, and to the viewers of uh, TV3 uh, this morning. Uh, of course, nowadays, a lot of people follow us online as well, to everybody who's following the platform. Um, for me, I think that, um, well, it will almost be like a broken record. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been talking about these uh, issues to do with flooding uh, for quite a while. Mm -hmm. uh, the most interesting thing for me yesterday was the fact that uh, the uh, areas that are actually noted to, I mean, be uh, prone to mm -hmm. flooding, mm -hmm. Uh, didn't I didn't I mean quite get too much uh, coming from those areas okay. but you also find out that there are new areas that uh, were not initially 
uh, flooding mm -hmm. and it's flooding now. Now, of course, it's also possible that there's a, a huge upset in terms of development across the, the city. And maybe in terms of the planning, hasn't been commensurate with the uh, large population increases and the development, even if you go across the uh, towards the motorway, for instance, where you have the Tema motorway. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many different things happening along the motorway with development mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, squatters and all sorts of things. And for us, also for a fact that the motorway itself has been there for a long time, it might have some engineering defects over the period. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think that, well, uh, it's unfortunate that we're still having these conversations. Mm -hmm. um, it's a given, it's open, it's knowledge that we we'll probably need to go back and uh, redesign some of these areas to make sure that uh, we do not actually become exposed <coughs> to the exigencies of the weather when these things happen. Mm -hmm. um, I was having a, an initial conversation. I'm saying, well, it's also strange that in October, close mm -hmm. to November, it's raining, and it's raining like it is now. And we haven't even become uh, aware, or we are not minded by this whole phenomenon of global warming mm -hmm. and its uh, effects. And the things that we have to do, for instance, collectively as a people, uh, to stem and forestall some of these things that's happening. I mean, issues to do with cutting of trees, emissions, all of these things are important. <laughs> and sometimes when it comes to sub-Saharan Africa, for some reason, because of the depths of poverty and stuff, we sometimes think that those things are things that conversations that we shouldn't be having. But mm -hmm. I think that it's about time that we become a bit more conscious about it. Um, I remember that that was the reason why the introduction of uh, LPG and all that to stop the burning of charcoal and all sorts of things. So for me, I think that it's a multifaceted issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have made uh, allusions to the fact that even when you, you're coming from the Ebri side of, of town, for mm -hmm. instance, because of the developments on the hill, mm -hmm. it's also caused some of these things right. to happen everything. But then even when the authorities would have to do something about it. It would need the buy-in of everybody. Because what it means is that you have issues to do with planning where people have built in waterways and people are uh, doing all sorts of things in places where they are unauthorized, for so they've instance. They've been permitted in, in some cases. Some is, yeah, but it, it, what it means is that we all have to probably uh, take the bull by the horn and also be responsible, take personal responsibility but, but, for some but of if, these But if things. the local assembly permits me to but, build... But sometimes, sometimes it mm. hasn't happened. Well, but in most cases, or, as we've come to realize, it, yes, in, they in, are permitted to build. It, no, but you see... There's that's a, there's that's a, judgment debt for us. That, no, but you see, when there's a permit, it's a totally different... But even that, when it comes out that uh, a permit has been given, but for the larger good, a public good. Everybody would benefit when that thing is done. Some level of, I mean, a compensation is given to uh, people all the time when, for instance, there's a road going somewhere or there's a bridge or there's a certain mm. development that is of a, uh, a national nature. So these things can, can be done. We have issues to do with even the, uh, the issuance of permits, for instance, mm. where um, if, for instance, I want a permit to build, it will go through a, a whole process, a bureaucratic process that maybe he will start even building before uh, the permit is issued. At that time, uh, a lot of things have already happened and it becomes difficult for either the uh, design to be varied or even to be disallowed uh, from the word go. So these are things that, for me, I mean, I'm not making excuses. We have issues to do with sanitation. People are still throwing their... Mm -hmm. Uh, later so in we'll, we'll the come to sanitation. and all let's, of those let's things. Let's so, on the, on the uh, permits thing. So mm -hmm. the uh, team that mm -hmm. will grant you permit includes NADMO, city engineers, town and country planning. Everybody is represented on that desk. How come that we don't have a synchronized voice? You get the permit and then while you start building, NADMO will come and say, oh, you are building on a waterway. When they actually sat at the table to give you the permit, to build. It's, it's a real problem. And just this morning, I was telling Bella and Crystal that 
Um, there are estates that have sprung up already. Look, Death Trackle was flooded yesterday. Mm -hmm. Death Trackle is a well-planned estate. Mm -hmm. How come it was flooded? It's because somebody is building at the top or upstream wrongfully, which is how come Death Trackle was got flooded yesterday, don't you But, see? I mean, we can make those. I, I don't have clarity on, or I'm not an expert on these things, but what I'm saying is that even when it comes to issuance of permits, um, it's a given that we don't even have enough of these professionals to start with, mm. one. Secondly, even when they are available, the processes that people would have to go through for that to happen becomes almost a deterrent. And people have had, I mean, I have personal experiences, I'm sure a lot of people have personal experiences where you would actually uh, go there to ask for a permit mm. and it takes months on end for that to happen. Yes. But sometimes it doesn't even happen. Mm. And so that, can, that needs to be re-looked at. But you see, another thing that really would probably uh, make this thing a bit easier is that mm. every new development should have a, a, a site plan, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. that would indicate clearly, and that happens in, mm -hmm. in most parts of the city I know, that will indicate clearly what's what a waterway, what the road, where the road is, where uh, a community area should be, and all of those things. And then, even before the permit is issued, there has to be a strict adherence to that particular site plan. Mm -hmm. But over the period, it, again, it hasn't happened. We've even spoken about the integrity of structures, for instance. I mean, the uh, structural engineers will tell you that even the design itself mm -hmm. would lend itself to... Is it because we're not punishing people enough? Because I know that if you, if you acquire a permit, before you dig the ground, you need to go back and inform them at least 48 hours that I'm going to build. And at every stage of the construction, you would have to go back and get somebody to supervise you know, the structural integrity of it, where you are citing it, whether you have altered the plan, whatever it is. So that the rules are there. The rules on the, paper. The, on paper, but do we punish the people pra enough practically, for going contrary to that? Practically, I don't know how that would work, mm. especially say for you go to an area where you have six, seven hundred developments, right? And maybe you have two people, officers, uh, that are responsible from that particular assembly. If you have to go through that process, I mean even just seven hundred mm it will take them a whole year to be able to do so. So mm. I'm saying that with the advent of, for instance, technology now, I mean, and it's, it's, it, we can use the diffusion of technology to be able to help us, okay. where areas are geotagged or mapped mm. uh, uh, digitally, where you sit in the, in the comfort of even the office and then be able to ascertain that, yes, this is a waterway, so a waterway and all of those things. We can activate some of these things. Mm. Um, because the physical or the manual aspect of it will be extremely difficult. So sometimes you even go to uh, uh, try and register your land, for instance, and then you have to give transportation or you have to actually go and pick up the person to come and take the coordinates of, of, of your land. So if there are 30 or 40 or 50 people that needs that to be done for them, just imagine how long that in itself will take. And people will now start by dint of being frustrated or whatever, mm. we we'll start doing things that are untoward. So okay. I, I think that, again, even this whole idea of flooding and uh, the city being prone to flooding, it takes responsibility. The government has a responsibility. The local assemblies have responsibility. But we also have the, uh, responsibility, even issues to do with what to do when you find yourself in a flood situation, for instance, is, is, is key, is imperative. For instance, mm. yesterday, driving home. And I was surprised because I was expecting that it would be uh, the usual mm. suspects. Who I, would, I just don't want to even... But you realize that people in booted and suited were actually driving on the opposite side of the road. And I'm thinking everybody wants to get home. You understand? So all of these things actually point mm. to a situation where a certain lack of like discipline and uh, some kind of decorum in terms of how we do but, but it. But if you see the water coming, yeah. Eric, you, you look no, for... No, but the point is that... You, you look for <laughs> salvation. Yeah, yeah, but then, then you create a gridlock. If, if you are on no. the motorway and no, but you, you create see it's that flooding, the point, that's what I'm saying that salvation. There has to be some kind of education as well. I okay. mean, in as much as you want to get home, it's also important if you stay out for three, four, five hours and you're safe and you're able to be productive to your 
uh, your country mm -hmm. and you're able to be safe for your family. Okay. That is more important than trying to uh, brave right. it and then expose okay. yourself to dangers. Mm. So, Ine, stepping for me at this point, the, the ideal thing is to identify, is to plan, is to build or develop, and is to live in. We identify a place, we go and live there, we build before we start to plan. And that is what has brought us up to this point. Again, I ask, have we done enough to prevent this annual recurrence of this apology? Well, Johnny, um, good morning once again to you. Good morning to Eric and our viewers, especially the very good people of the Tamale North constituency. I think that um, just like Eric, I am developing some fatigue uh, when it comes to discussing these issues. Mm -hmm. And it is quite embarrassing. And I think it should be treated as a collective shame mm -hmm. that in this day and age, every time it rains for a few hours, mm -hmm you are sure to have this kind of conversation the following day on you know, very important platforms like yours. Mm -hmm. I think it's a shame. I thought that especially, I mean, I thought that the, the ridiculing mm -hmm. of especially um, Oko Van der Poy right. in those years mm -hmm. would have marked the watershed. I mean, would have, would have perhaps prompted all of us mm -hmm. as, as a nation as administrators, wherever we find ourselves, to contribute to ensure that never again, mm. you know, will we have to, you know, conduct discussions around the subject of flooding. But here we are, and sometimes I'm tempted to think that our problem is too much blessing. How so? <laughs> yeah, you see, Tony, when these things happen, I. I shudder to think of a situation where we had to deal with, say, snow. Mm. You know, countries that snow. And the preparations people have to make to ensure that people don't die. Mm. Mm. You know, I shudder to think. I, I think that we are so blessed that we take too many things for granted. Right. And so something as simple as floods will kill our grandparents kill us and possibly kill our children. And we can't seem to find a solution to it. That's why I say it's a collective shame that in this day and age, this is what we are discussing. Because what is it? It's, it's a planning problem. You rightly talked about it. Elsewhere, you know, planning is done in tandem with uh, development. development. Mm -hmm. In our part of the world, planning catches up with development. And it's so difficult to find one place to put the blame. Mm -hmm. And maybe that is why perhaps we haven't been able to find a solution yet. Because it's so difficult to hold one institution or one person responsible. Is it, the, is it politicization to blame for it? You see, I don't, I don't agree with this talk of, you know, uh, 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 there's no matter that is not political. Johnny, let's be sincere. But, there but, is no matter in the world that is not political. But, but this one, politics, where, where lives you are see, involved, Johnny, Johnny, should we politicize Johnny, it? Johnny, politics is about choices. Mm. It's about choices. And the choices my leaders make mm. can lead to floods not happening or floods happening people dying or people not dying. So you cannot have flats, people dying, and say, don't politicize it. When there are leaders in place who are supposed to take decisions to ensure that flats don't happen and people don't die. It's a collective responsibility, isn't it? Yes, we all have. That's why I said that it is difficult to find a place to place the blame okay. because it can be shared. But I'm saying that let's not... I, I, I don't fancy discussions that are usually conducted with the pretense that politicization makes it worse. No. At every point in time, that's why we have that local saying that when a fish is getting rotten, it starts from the head. 
So at what point do we say that let's forget the head when it is rotten and, and deal with the tail or the body? Because when you talk about the head rot, not playing its role, then you are politicizing it. Have let's we, get it right. Have you we see, punished people enough? Like I have said, it's an engineering problem. Is it? I mean, it's a planning problem. It's an engineering problem. You know, it is, it is, it is a resource problem. Sir David Ajay says it's a common sense problem. Yes. The man who put together yes. there. Yes. You I see, interviewed him here. Yes. In the end, in the end, you will take you 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 may have to agree with him because you see, yes, people have been trained as engineers. People, I mean, as a nation, we borrow, we raise money, we borrow, we raise money through taxes and other resources, and we borrow. So we have money. Now, so we have the engineers who can design. Mm you know, our cities in such a way that they won't flood. We have the engineers. Mm. Yes, we have enough money to do the designs that are required to prevent the floods. Mm. As citizens, we are educated enough to also go through the processes that are required so that together, perhaps we will build at better places and do it well. Mm. We will, you know, uh, 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 manage our sanitation in ways that you do not contribute to these floods. We are educated enough, but we don't do all of that. Our governments, when they get their money, choose to prioritize other things. Our engineers, when they have their jobs, you know, other considerations come into play. You and I, our level of education should let us know we shouldn't build without a permit, we shouldn't, right. but we don't. Mm -hmm. So in the mm -hmm. end, you are tempted to agree that then maybe it's just a problem of common sense. Common sense. That's why I'm saying that, look, let us not, let us not, you know, uh, uh, think that in this discussion, anybody can escape blame. But a chunk of the blame cannot also escape the doorsteps of people in authority. And people in authority here does not necessarily mean only those who are elected. Okay. Yes, they hold, they are the policy makers. They bring the budget and they determine where money goes. Mm. You know, so you can blame them right. to some extent. Mm. But even the little that comes to the planning offices, you know, at our various assemblies, assemblies right. the urban roads, mm. the little resources that come there to dredge drains, mm -hmm in the absence of permanent solutions, because dredging is not a permanent solution, right. but in the absence mm. of permanent solutions, the dredging that is required and which is important, mm. how much money is usually voted by central government for these things? Mm. And when it gets to urban roads, when it gets to you know, the assemblies, do they really put these monies to good use? Are the drains really desalted? Who is when are we are awarding contracts, <laughs> I mean, what kind of designs who do is, our engineers who is supervising? bring? Who is, super who is supervising? There's, there's yes. supposed to be a supervision. The district channel. chief executive, who is the representative of the president mm. in terms of the work that the planning officer is supposed to do, should be the supervising agent. If you go to the urban roads, the, there's an really, urban roads director, very, there's a road minister. You know, they are the supervising mm. agents. But it's very rare that they would have the technical competences. You see, we. Okay. we I mean, and it's good. I mean, people like Johnny would always shift the blame on the politician, but that's fine. But I'm saying that, I mean, even but if the you politicians go to, make their appointments. Yeah, yeah, but even so if, if you go, if you, even if you go to so, like, so the roads Eric, if, and if highways, you're appointing instance, somebody I'm sure, who doesn't have the technical competence to supervise, no, no, why appoint the person? No, no, no. What I'm saying, and, and I even that. disagree. You see, no, I don't I'm think just that you always need the, technical competence to supervise. All you need to know are your KPIs. I mean, you know. No, but what I'm even talking about the engineering aspect of it, which is a technical. Eric, I share, I, share, I share yeah. something brief with you. Okay. My grandmother was not schooled, my mm -hmm. maternal grandmother, mm -hmm. and she would always insist that we do our homework and she would have a cane by her side yeah. and she would say, read it, do it. Yeah, even so, though she doesn't know but if she, 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 know she didn't know. Or not. So one day, one day I had a problem so with a word uh -huh. and then I went to her to help me. And then he called my, she called my big brother to help me. And then I said, this woman doesn't know this thing, yeah. but she's been beating me all this while <laughs> just to get it right. So, I mean, like so really say, you, you need to. I, no, I, I agree. I agree with the ultimate responsibility. Mm -hmm. I, I won't shy away from that. All I'm saying is that, like Suhini actually attributed to, the, we have a, a, a collective responsibility. Mm -hmm. We have to have people, professionals who are meant to do what they are meant to do. So, for instance, if 
I was a roads minister, for instance. I have absolutely no engineering background. Right. Right. So you'd expect that your technical director for whatever will tell you that this contract meets these specifications. The contractor has done mm. X, Y, Z that is meant to do. And then let's go ahead mm -hmm. and actually uh, pay this particular contractor or let's uh, sign off this project. <coughs> then six months down the line, right, the roads erase and then the roads are washed off. Right. Right. At that point, who has shared in, in terms of responsibility? You would have to, and so you, you keep asking who should be punished. Right. Now, what it means is that if he, somebody has a certain technical competence mm. that you are supposed to rely on for uh, advice and all of those things, and they're able to pass off a road, for instance. I remember a couple of months ago, I think the Auditor General, for instance, said he was going to procure some equipment to, to go and test the uh, if the, the roads, roads mm. had uh, and, and that's the his proper job. specifications that's his job. and all of those things. But is, it, did he even have to come to that to start with? So I'm saying that there has to be a collective responsibility, mm -hmm. just to round off. We also have an issue with a, 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 a land tenure system in this country. Okay. So for instance, the land is, is sold. The only time that you know that land is sold and it's about to be developed is somebody walks to the Lands Commission, for instance, mm -hmm. to say that uh, I, want to, check I want to check the title and everything. Mm -hmm. Now at that point, I mean, there are areas in this city now that people are buying land for $100,000 and over and all of those mm -hmm. things. Then they buy the land, they try to start um, developing the land. Then all of a sudden, government is meant to come in and put in the various amenities and all of those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm saying that in this particular instance, what it means is that there has to be some kind of collaboration between government, especially in high-end areas, mm -hmm. so that the, the, so if you're paying $100,000 for a land, then really what it means is that there has to be some commitment to support the development okay. of that. Let, let's, let's quickly take a look. Uh, we'll go to Bella for messages. But let's take a look at um, the government's... Um, Accra will be the cleanest city in, in Africa by the close of uh, President Kufado's tenure. It came up heavily yesterday because atop the water you could see the, all the plastics flying around. What would be your own assessment, Eric, of of this uh, promise and what we are doing to make sure that this promise is actually realized. Okay, I mean, I, I, I live in this city and um, I don't think that I would be able to say that um, everywhere you go, uh, it's as spick and span as the English would say. Mm. Uh, some, I know for a fact that some work has been done. Uh, when you talk about sanitation, it's it's a, it's a pleasure of things, right? Um, I know that in so many neighborhoods in this city, uh, government has actually done these um, uh, home toilet facilities for uh, various communities mm -hmm. where he had to do a actually uh, open, doing open defecation and all of those things. I know that <coughs> the odor and some surrounding areas mm -hmm. have been dredged by virtue of uh, the fact that it used to be an issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though it rained yesterday, uh, those areas we were meant to be flood prone didn't experience some of these things. So it means that some work is, is ongoing. What would be uh, your assessment? What my assessment really is, I can't sit here and give Put you a figure a to it. I can't. A percentage? I can't. But it's still, it's still a work in progress, if you ask me. Uh, is there more to be done? Yes, there's more to be done. Okay. You're talking about how, plastics. How much more? You're, you're talking about plastics. How much I mean, more? This conversation around plastic is, is something. Well, I can't sit here and give you, take a cursory look and give you a number. But I'm saying that it's a given that there still needs to be a lot of work to be done. Okay. The government has a responsibility. Okay. The local authorities have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. We as citizens mm -hmm. and individuals also have personal responsibilities. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so that the idea of a, a, a crab being the cleaner city would be something that would be a reality rather okay. than. So, so, let me take a quick so one we can this. we so can take lessons from some of these things, okay. and I think that you see, once people are becoming a bit more aware, you know. So when we even talk about sanitation, and you live in an area where you are not um, essentially affected by it, you think that it doesn't affect you. Okay, and so let, let, let's the rains really come, and then this, you find uh, yourself so in the last step. So we all take personal responsibility. Okay, so really take a bite on this. Uh, we're in 2019. By 2020. Um, the timeline that we set for ourselves or the president set for us will be done. What will be your own assessment of Accra being a cleaner city because it contributes to this whole annual flooding? 
You know, I've always said that one of our tragedies, tragedies as a country at this point is the kind of leadership that we have. It's clueless and it's just a talking leadership. Listen, we had somebody promise Accra allow, allow, in allow, 100 allow, days. Eric, allow him to... Allow I him mean, to. we had somebody promise Accra be in the clinic in 100 days. Allow, allow, yeah. uh, you know, allow so, Suhidi, I mean, come on. Allow Suhidi to have his bites. Uh, there, right, there, are, there are also a, a lot of 100-day promises that Dr. Baumia gave us which has not been achieved, but <laughs> it's, let, it's, let's, let's go okay, to so that. So now it's program. clear that I'm here against two against one. Right? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I mean, I'm, just, I'm talking to Suhidi and I'm, then I'm, I'm, I'm just referring, I'm just referring you to what was promised. Play the victim. But, so, so let me take a bite. Let's I'll talk about like, it. You will allow me because. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go well, ahead. go ahead. Okay. So I mean, I've, I've said it several. The leadership is clueless and it's just a talking leadership. And um, I'm not surprised that even at this rate mm -hmm. of you know filth and galvin our city, you still have mm -hmm. that bravado you know, from officials assuring us of how, you know, things are put in place to ensure that we are still, the, there, we still become the cleanest There's uh, a recycle plan place. around Kolebu. That re recycle plan is a private company. Yeah, there are public litter bins all over town. Forget it. It's a, it's a and that, that, that plant, the owner and managers have been on TV with documentaries pleading with government to support and help them. So it has nothing to do with that promise of making, you know, uh, Accra the cleanest That's, quite, that's, nothing that's to quite interesting. Do yes, and, 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 and you see, that, you see that, that is the problem that we have. It seems they live in a different world altogether. Who, are, so who are these days? Our leadership today, okay. of today, they, they, they don't seem to be in touch mm. with reality. And so you will hear the president, you know, uh, talk about how to make Accra, uh, you know, the cleanest city mm -hmm. at uh, State House where they were launching a sanitation. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, how do you even launch a program like that at the State House? But that's what I mean by not in touch with reality. You are talking about sanitation and the need for people to keep their mm -hmm. surroundings and environment clean. Mm -hmm. And the, the place you choose to launch such a project is at the state house. Eric, no wonder, no wonder it didn't fly. I mean, they Eric, said they were going to recruit people to be sweeping uh, and, and taking sanitation no marshals. One, marshal. No wonder it so, didn't. Eric it didn't couldn't happen. put a percentage. Can you put a percentage? Then we will go to Bella. Percentage in terms of in terms of how we are fed in making Accra a cleaner city. Oh, I think I think I think we have done nothing. Absolutely nothing. You don't see the we public have, litter bins. No, please, the, those are things we've always had. Really? We would, I mean, when, assembly, I know watch, that Colorado, Colorado, Bella, Bella, assembly. Bella, Bella stepping for me. People in this that country. country. Just, under your assembly watch. has always okay. installed your watch. as beans. <laughs> I like, I like the lady. No, no, no. You can do no, no. research and find out no, no. how many people died around and, the Teshi Rabadi area. Under their okay. watch. Well, come. So Let, that's it. That's absolutely that's nothing. I think that's 0. 0.000%. <laughs> I like you, Sweeney. I like you. Eric, the lady is... Thank you very much. <laughs> On that 0.00%, uh, Walanya and Akwetia says oh, you, today... You, you're, you say 0.00%. But that's, he says absolutely nothing. nothing so if he it. said nothing, that would be 0%, but absolutely okay. makes it 0.00%. 0. 0. 0. Okay. 0. We hear you. Anyway, I don't know if Eric agrees, but Walanya and Akwetia says today we're here again talking about floods, and we're not even ashamed of ourselves as a sovereign state whose leaders sleep on their mandate uh, responsibilities. Okay, what a failed nation Kwame Nkrumah's Ghana has become. Johnny, wait. They'll come out with their English vocabularies. Those in charge should bow their heads in shame. Hmm. Hi, Johnny. For once, the MPP has not blamed Mahama for the rains and the floods. Is that what they do all the time? <laughs> Good morning, Johnny. I would like to commend the TV3 mission team for their efforts in addressing basic social issues within our communities. They should continue to wake up uh, the authorities who are refusing to do their basic social responsibilities. That's Francis from Commenda. The problem with floods in the country is not from politicians, but the chiefs and families who sell the lands. We should change our land act. Mr. Boache and Sir Kumase. Interesting. Now, from Teacher Constitution, we are more say, so when is flooding going to stop in this uh, country? If we don't change our attitude towards cleanliness and also stop building in waterways, we will always cry for help from government. So can't we learn from our past mistakes? Oh, Ghana, our attitude is the cause of our problems, so we should change our attitude. Good morning, TV3. What happened yesterday at Tema Motorway is not about planning. It is one of the natural disasters, ferries from 
Tema. And finally, good morning, TV3. When we build um, road and drainage systems, they say we don't eat roads. Where are the competent men? Now is the time to deliver. And this is Osman Bukurisung in Tamale. Okay, Osman Done. is asking, where are the competent men, Eric? Where are they? I mean, you remember, you remember in oh, that, 20, that was Eric's question. You remember in that 20, was Eric's no, question. No, but I, I mean, you see, Johnny. Okay, that was sorry. Eric's question. Okay, I'm fair. So Johnny, I'm fair. <laughs> Johnny, you, you become a bit unfair to me. When no, I no, I'm just asking the question that. But uh, when, since when did you start asking questions from testing? Okay. Oh, so, so you yeah, don't want yeah, to answer yeah, my question. No, no. But the thing is that it's obvious that you see. Let me tell you. You can, you can do the mischief, but it's obvious that. Oh, you consider my questions mischief? It's mischief. It's mischief. But really. Let me tell you something. Even in the area of is it is it not is it not even, fair even, is it not fair to ask even 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 when, in the when area you, when you I, I let remember make, no, hold I, I'll on. make no, let, let, let me give let, let me let me give let me give let me give you a premise. Let me answer the no, no, question no, no. and then let me let me put a premise to my question so you don't say it is a mischievous question. Let me answer. President Akufuado. Let me answer. President Akufuado in announcing all his ministers at the State House or at the Jubilee House would call the minister in and read a portfolio and tell you what credentials the minister has yes. and what uh, he expects the minister to achieve and why the minister has been put there. Okay. He did that for all the ministers and deputies exactly. and which would drive towards competence. Mm. Osman Burkusson says, I don't see the competence. Where are the competent men? And you say it's mischievous. Let me tell you something. You see, and if you allow me, I would, I would start from, you see, as a citizen of this country, he's allowed to prefer a divergent opinion and have an opinion that he shares. Mm -hmm. I don't have a challenge with that. Now, if you bring it back to specifics, okay. even in the area of sanitation, mm -hmm. and I have told you, you can go out there and check how many of these uh, toilet facilities have actually been done by this government right. in communities that either to where indulge in open education. 75%, 50%. You understand? It has happened. Again, even in the f areas that were prone to flooding in this city, mm. as we speak, like the Odona area and the Adabraka, Adbosoka and area, as we speak today, even when it rained yesterday, where we are, all these reportage, it didn't affect them as much, right? Because some work has been done. Okay. And I stated that it's not as if that I can sit here and say that we have done everything. Mm. But even in comparison to my friend here, who is now, you've made, you found him uh, a leveraged on. The me, issue, me found you found him a leverage oh, really? to, to start yeah, on. I think you're but being, is it, let you're me tell you something. Let, listen, and you, you guess, no, let sorry, me tell you. I asked him, I asked him a question. I asked him a question. Even him. issues to do with cholera, mm. which is a direct correlation with sanitation issues. 2014, issue, you're talking under about. Under their watch, mm. how many Ghanaians died from cholera in 2014. In exactly. So I'm saying that, you see, it's always easy or it's, it's okay to discount the, uh, the work of government and have your own uh, skewed or biased political leaders. I have no challenge mm. with that. That is democracy. But the facts on the ground points to a government mm. that has actually done much better than before, previously. So, so when it I ask the question that, about the public mean, litter being it doesn't, it doesn't, mischief too. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. When, when I ask the question about the public litter no, it doesn't litter mean that we have done mischief. everything. Even issues to do with... When, when I ask the question about listen, the public litter being was I playing mischief No, too? listen. You asked the question even about the recycling plan that right. has been set up. Right. And his view was that because it's a private sector initiative... It doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't count. I mean, come on. What kind of preposterous okay. Let, let's, position is Sweeney, that? Okay, you're talking about... Especially when government has... You see, indicated that you see, it's actually going to support the same private sector individual to replicate these things across the country. Okay, allow him to have a bite and then you we will, see, we will first close. of all, I didn't say it doesn't count. The private sector initiative mm. to improve sanitation doesn't count. I didn't say that. No, no. You you, you say it doesn't count in, in, in for the, the government. Promise, yes. In the promise right. of the government. Right. Did people the die government, from listen, cholera or the not? Government, under your watch? The Loads government, of people. Okay. The government promised to make Accra, the, the cleaner city. city, and have done absolutely nothing as far as the support mm -hmm. to this private initiative is concerned. Mm -hmm. So how do you attribute that to, you the know, the to the government's, situation. you know, forward march to fulfilling that pledge? It's, it's, it's not, it's neither here nor there. You're talking about 2012. And you see, I find it, yes, I will get there, but I find it ridiculous, very ridiculous, that my friend will sit here mm -hmm. And in the face of what people 
are going through this morning mm. as a result of floods last yesterday and the rubbish in their area that they have to deal with. Mm. He sits here and he talks cholera and that things are better. So those people who are going through whatever mm. they are going through that, today that, that, should sure. remember that cholera killed people no, no, in this country. No, but, uh, but coming saved, from you, I okay. coming from I you. I safe to say, okay. go check the records. In fact, in June, only June this year, mm. Mm. Ghana Health Service had to caution people about cholera outbreak. But, and then what happened? So if, if you have an opposition, that does not sensationalize the things you sensationalized mm. when you were in opposition. You don't turn around and do the propaganda and continue the propaganda that we have, you have done with things in the past. Okay, it's the propaganda. I think okay. it is, it is, I think it is beyond you. The, I think mean, it is beyond the, the time, the time you. You should not reduce yourself the, to that the time is up. level Eric, but of propaganda. The, yesterday, really, please, he's asking me a question. Please. Oh, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't you have finished. No, you see, you, the, the question that you <laughs> asked is so relevant, but Johnny, he, about the competent men. I thought you had finished. About the competent men. Look, the president, like you rightly said, even justified the inflated number of appointees he has Johnny, because he yeah, said actually, there was work to be done. Yes, so question, it is okay. important for us to, to ask the president why all these people are drawing salary from our meager taxes mm. because when he assured us that they were going to do work, okay. when we have a worse situation than we used uh, okay. to have. Uh, so it is important. That, that question, question is very relevant. In fact, there were even sermons in the past that said, the flooding and other problems were wisdom problems. They, and that people they, with wisdom they, were they now coming to take over. Where are those wisdom? Sweeney, the, so the, so the, 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 the solution the also is that yes. the Forestry Commission has planted uh, 30 million trees to the youth in afforestation. The only problem is that they are crying that their salaries have not been paid. But the trees have been planted. It's working towards global warming. And, have you and, gone around to see change. the trees? At you don't are believe just, official see, figures. These are official see, figures. At least, at least. He doesn't are, believe official figures. No, I'm Let not me tell saying I don't believe it. I'm just saying let's confirm. At least these are not the trees that were planted under better Fantastic. Uh, whatever so, that. So he will but, talk about better but, Ghana and Savannah. But, but, How did it come about? Yeah. Because people went on the field and realized that some plantations that well, were claimed to have been done we're not done. Go on the yeah, yeah, that's film. So Don't just take the figures and assume listen, that. Listen, listen, oh, listen. And then so he's that, discounting. But at least the they have planted the trees. They are asking to be paid. And I yes. know for a fact How do you know they have planted they, the trees? Uh, Let's go when, when are they going finance, to be paid? Has and see I how well the trees are some doing. Parents is going what to we do okay, is that they haven't okay. been paid. Okay. Alasa Sweeney is the member of parliament for the Tamale yeah, North constituency. He is in the race one more time to, uh, to get it. And he's been here on the ticket of the NDC. And Eric Chum is a member of the MPP's communication team. He has an eye on the Fantiakwa South seat, but until his party gives him the clearance, uh, he says he won't announce it here. So, uh, good morning, Eric, and good morning, Sweeney. Thank you very much for your time. Very interesting. <laughs>